best-selling author Mia Redrick regularly meets with mothers to help them prioritize their busy lives. So, you know, one of the things Welcome that I to found the broadcast. If you're watching no the replay, your hearts to count. Yeah. Yeah. If you're watching the replay, your hearts to count. GYSB movement is in the house. Good to see you, girl. This is going to be a great scope tonight. Hey, Charlotte Avery is in the house. Good to Whatever see you. Whatever we do for ourselves is what we are giving to our family. Hey, darling. Good to see you. I'm always ready to work out. So hey, I always bring Charlotte, with me good to see my you. jump rope as well as my resistance bands. Easy way to get your workout in any day, any time. I love the toolkit, Mia. How about dads? Can dads have one too? Absolutely. Dads create the best toolkits. The deal is just be prepared for the wherever you're going to be that day with your family to invite maximize your friends, the day. Guys, if you have invite ever your friends. said there are not enough hours in a day, you're going to love my next hey, strategy. Hey, good to see you. Tell me blending. your name. Blending is, is when Virginia? you are doing something for your children, looking for opportunities. Nicole is in the house. Good to see you. Self. Nicole. Guys, tell me, how are you wonderful. Good to see you, Virginia. blending in your life? How are you guys, taking invite care your friends, of yourself invite your followers on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook? Friend who's a it's going to be a great, a great we scope. I'm going to try to keep it quick tonight. Our kids play outside. Oh, oh, we're getting me part. time. We're getting mommy time. And our kids I are up. having it's a good time. Like, We've had over 280 I just finished the coaching call. And I think the power of the group has been that moms have no judgment just camaraderie. Uh, you have an opportunity to connect with other women in your demographics of motherhood. I'm a night I owl. That moms aren't necessarily Ooh. looking to balance their work <laughs> in their life. I think what we want more of is joy. Creating I come alive at night. This is joy on a daily basis in your life is the goal. The next time you and your family need a getaway, try I know, I know. I'm not crazy. What I mean by that is it was really a wolf thing. Guys, hard enough. Tours. Invite your this followers, exactly invite your friends your to come on the stove. It's going to be really and great reconnect. tonight. Even I'm going in the to bring of your it. busy lives. Remember, when mama's happy, everyone else is happy. Now, Thank you for doing Most people think of dating, they think of being single, going out in the town, but when We're you're gonna married We're going to get started kids, in about two minutes, that's guys. That's when the real dating uh, fun should begin. It sure is. Well, our mom strategist explains why and shares her rules of family dating. This is something you've probably not thought about, but it's worked really great for me, and it is dating your family. And you know, because you have six children, one of the things that works terrific is to be able to date at home. And what I get a lot of my clients to do is to create a dating box, and in that box, you and your husband can put things that you want to enjoy together. Because sometimes we have opportunities to date our partners. I love it. I love it. You enjoyed the scope today, earlier minutes, today. That was a good one. But by the time he has to go and get the movie or get a meal, the time that we're you are going to get started in about 30 gone. seconds, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Wow, Thank you for inviting wow. your well, friends. Welcome to the author of Time for Mommy, 365 Daily Strategies for Mother's Self-Care, Mia Redrick. Mia, thank you so much. Stand up, please. Pleasure, pleasure. I really feel for this family. You really you did help them with some tips, but what can we all take away from this? Well, dear time is such a simple way to build quality in Thank your you family for the time and to make self-care a reality every single day. It's simple. So drop everything and read. Drop everything and read. It will allow the kids to see mom and dad having some downtime, and it becomes part of the family culture. Self-care. So what about the fact that she has no time to herself? She sits in her car and listens to the radio and lies to her husband about where she is just so she can have a moment to read. So what we talked about was them giving one another permission without guilt and supporting that time and understanding you need that when you have two young children. Mm -hmm. They're a couple that wants to be together. They don't want to be apart. And so you can see that when they started to date, just to dance together, it they reconnected immediately. I saw you covering your ears when that was happening. Why? It's emotional. Yeah. Can you get started it's in about 10 seconds? I love my husband and we all forget why we got married. Here are my people. Let me flip the camera. Oh, I'm looking like Elvis Presley tonight. Hey guys, it's Mia Redrick here, the mom strategist. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited about the topic tonight, which is um, how to master yourself, like how to master yourself, like what exactly am I talking about? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist and I support mostly moms with life and business success. I work with a 
small number of dads also. Um, you can always catch me at K-A-T-C-H dot me and just search my name, Mia underscore Redrick. And there are over a hundred scopes uh, there where you can learn what I talk about, which is mostly life and business success, how to build your brand, how to build the brand of you, how to take your content, monetize it, how to have a better family, because don't we all want to have a better family? I know I certainly do. Um, or you can visit my website at miaredrick.com and sign up for my newsletter list. Lots of free, great goodies there as well. Um, I'm Mia Redrick, and I got started in my business about 13 years ago, and I wanted to go to work as myself, like I actually wanted to go to work as me, and I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to do that, and I decided to meet with a consultant at a small business resource center, and I said, I want to combine my background as a trainer and my love of motherhood into a business, and I was told that what I'm currently doing today that no one would ever pay me to do what I currently do in terms of coaching clients. I've worked with over 400 clients uh, in the last 13 years, 112 authors, half of them are number one Amazon bestsellers, and I'm a full-time entrepreneur. And I'm, I'm really proud about that because that was a goal. I know it's a goal of so many entrepreneurs to be able to work from the comfort of their home or to be able to take their ideas and leverage their ideas to be into a business uh, that's profitable enough so that they can be full-time entrepreneurs. So if you love that, then you're going to love, if you love my story, then you're going to love everything that I scope about. My only goal on my scopes is to support more people with doing the same, with more families while understanding how to build life and business success because I think it's pretty cool. Are you guys ready for me to get started? So I'm going to get started today. I'm going to be talking about um, how to master uh, how to master yourself. And the reason I thought self-mastery was such a, a great topic, it's not something that we think about a lot, but at the end of the day, when people create success, the question is, how is it that some people actually achieve success and other people struggle to achieve you know, the same success or results in their lives? And I believe it all boils down to self mastery. It's self-mastery. It's how they spend their time. So I'm going to cover a couple of different areas that you can master within yourself to create different results. And I see this like when I coach my clients, that uh, when I coach my clients, or even as I work in my own business, or as I'm learning from my own teachers, we all are working on this whole notion of self-mastery, mind mastery. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to share with you today is number one, if you want to master yourself, you've got to master your thoughts. Okay. The first area of mastery, in my opinion, is are your thoughts, right? You've got to focus on, you got to get clean, clear on what you're going to be thinking about. And what I find as that dividing line for all of us, I know Virginia, that dividing line for all of us is that sometimes we are not clear about what we're thinking about or what we're focused on. And when we aren't clear about what we're focusing on, like meaning is it something that's good, that's edifying, that uplifts you, that makes your life better, that moves you in the direction of where you want to be, or is it something that's neutral, that keeps you stuck and stagnant wherever you are, or is it something that's negative, that, that pulls at you, that eats at you, that doesn't serve your highest good? Your thoughts have a significant influence on mastery in your life. And, you know, one of the things that I've learned, and I will tell you the story, when I um, decided to learn to swim, so it was maybe four years ago, I couldn't swim, right? I couldn't swim a lick. And I wanted to learn to swim. So I decided that I would start my own triathlon team for women, for moms, and invite 11 other women to join me to do a triathlon, like true story, okay? And I figured that I would try and quit swimming because I was so afraid, but if I was a part of a team, I wouldn't. And it was so interesting what I learned during this process of having to learn to swim. I hired a swimming instructor, and then I hired a tri-swim coach to help me endurance swim, and then to open water swim because I had only learned to swim in a pool. I'd only trained in a pool, and the event was in a lake outside, right, point 
um, what is it, 0.67 was the swim, all right? Um, and what I learned about mastery and my thoughts was that even though I had, and I was building the skill set to learn to swim, and I had become a great swimmer, my thoughts, my thoughts, the way I thought of myself, I never associated myself with being a great swimmer, even though at the time that I was training, I'd gotten to a point where I could swim a mile without stopping in the pool. And I still associated myself as not a good swimmer. This is like the craziest thing. So much so that I was still swimming on the outside lane the day before my actual trial swim in the lake because I was afraid to swim on the inside lane at the pool. You guys hear me on this? So your thoughts, um, your thoughts do influence what you believe is possible for yourself. And it was in interesting. The one of the ways that I always recommend that anyone challenge their thoughts, right? If you're trying to master your thoughts, you've got to have a physical experience that defies what you're thinking to change how you think about yourself. So this is what I mean. So I was swimming on the outside lane, but when I did my open water swim, I had to actually swim in the lake, which was the next day, right? So I swam in the open water race and now I'm swimming in the lake. And here it is all this time I'm thinking the day before, the weeks leading up to this open water, you know, trial swim, I can't swim in the inside lane in the pool. And yet now I'm swimming in a lake at point six seven. Hear me. And once I did that, I'll never forget it. I got halfway through my swim and I started seeing people with, I could see the colors that people were wearing. And I knew I was on my way back from my swim and I had, I was halfway there. And I was like, Mia, you might be a really great, you might be a really great swimmer. So if you are struggling with your thoughts, like maybe what you're telling yourself about yourself, you have to have a physical experience that defies what you're thinking to change what you're thinking. So for me, it was swimming in that lake that day that changed how I thought about myself. I went from thinking that I wasn't a great swimmer to being in the lake, turning that corner, realizing I had swam half my swim, seeing someone else's clothes, you know, uh, on the, at the shore and realizing I'm a pretty amazing swimmer. Oh my gosh, I'm open water swimming. This is a pretty darn big swim. I feel amazing. So if this is you, one of the things you have to do is you have to force yourself to do the things you don't want to do because once you have a physical experience that defies what you're thinking, once you have that physical experience, you will never think that same thing about yourself again. I've learned that. It's one of the ways that I, I challenge myself in terms of self-mastery. If I think a thought that isn't aligned with where I want to be, then I just make myself have a physical experience that proves otherwise to me. You can't, you can't any longer believe it, first thing. So that's one of the ways you can master your thoughts. Number two, you have to master your habits. So if you... If you're dealing with self-mastery, one of the things you want to focus on are your habits. So mastery is all about uh, disciplining your habits over and over again to create a certain result or a certain outcome or have a certain focus. So when you see that people are showing up in a way that you admire, they have different habits that they have mastered. Meaning if you see someone that's a great public speaker, for example, they have mastered public speaking because they speak more than most people. They have a habit that most people don't have. Therefore, they show up and their result or their outcome is greater than at the average person because their habits are different. They might get up in the morning and they might read something differently. They might have different uh, activities as it relates to their trainers, their teachers, their coaches, their mentors. They may practice more. I know this is true because one of my clients is a PGA golf pro. And it was so amazing. Like Tim was so amazing. He just passed a couple of months ago. Um, God rest his soul. Um, and I'll never forget it. And I said, how is it that you're like an amazing golfer? What do you do? And he told me he has this habit that whenever he would go in his bathroom, he has a golf club in his bathroom and that on the, the tile that's lined on the floor that he swings like hundreds and hundreds of swings every time he goes into his bathroom. He said that he would buy a map whenever he was going to play a course and he would play it with his finger over and over again in his mind. He had different habits. So whenever you see people who are showing up and accomplishing their goals and getting certain results, you got to know that they've got different habits. They've mastered certain habits so that they can create a different outcome. It is not just by accident that people get results. 
results or they show up powerfully, but they have different behaviors. Okay, you guys with me on this? They have different behaviors that allow them to show up differently. And I think that that's so important to know and to acknowledge because I think sometimes we look, hey there, good to see you. We look at what people are accomplishing and we never think about what are their, what are their habits? What are they doing that's different? What is it that you know, what, what, what is, what makes them show up in that way? It's our habits. I can tell you that my husband, he laughs at me. I'm an exceptionally disciplined person. I get up in the morning. I do pretty much almost the same thing every single morning. I'm very focused on how I am going to do the things that I need to get done. I have different kind of habits, what I read, what I eat, what I focus on, who I spend my time with. I'm very, very disciplined. It's a habit for me, it's just the way of living. And I think that successful people show up differently. They've got different habits. Number three are, are your actions, right? So to me, if you're thinking about how to master yourself, you're also always focused on what your actions are. For me, I think in what, it's a level of activity. So it's one thing to have thoughts, right? And it's another thing to have habits, right? But you've got to take actions. You've got to actually Pull the trigger on the things that you want to see happen in your life, right? In order for things to change in your life. Does this make sense? So if it makes sense, somebody say, it makes sense, Mia, because a lot of times we never think about it. It's not about what you know. It's about what you act on that you know that changes the outcome of what happens for you in your life. And a lot of us never think about it. We take for granted the things that we know and we are not in a state of activity. But one of the things that I'm, you know, one of my, my best friend, thank you so much, Virginia. One of my best friend, her name is Melissa Evans. One of the things that we always talk about is that we're like, we're diehard implementers. We implement, we, we hear things, we know what we need to do, and we take action. Our activity level, our action level is very, very high. We implement at a high level based on what we know, what we understand. We run plays. And I'm just saying this to you because let's say if this is not you, then this is one of those things that you want to master is your level of taking action. People who take action in their own lives, they get greater results, right? They Because they're doing more. They're sending out more. For me, every single day, my only goal is to send out three ships every day, but I'm vigilant about it. It's a habit for me. It's like every single day, I know that I'm going to send something out in my business that can come back to me, that can be impactful and great in my business. It's an action that I'm going to take. I commit to that action. I have actions that I take for me as it relates to self-care in my life. I have actions that I take for my family, dating my husband, dating my children, dating myself. These are actions that I take. And as a result of those actions, I begin to master you know, I begin to master what dating looks like in my family or what love looks like in terms of my relationship with my spouse or my communication with my kids. OK, so number four is um, if you want to master yourself, one of the things you need to do is you have to master your associations. And hear me on this. So mastering your associations means I believe you're a product of the people you hang out with, the things you see on TV. Um, the things that you listen to, okay? So th it, those are your th the things you're associating with. So you have to master where you spend your time, what you're looking at, what you're reading, um, who you're spending your time with. In my, in this case, I think Periscope is association. So you want to make sure that the things that you are putting inside your mind are things that allow you to show up powerfully, that allow you to get the results that you want. And some of us don't realize that, you know, we spend so much time, we waste so much time with things that don't fuel us, that are not a part of our future. Hey, Pat, good to see you. It's Mia Redrick. I am talking today about how to master yourself. And I've already called, uh, I've already covered a couple of things. One is if you want to master yourself, the first thing you have to do is master your thoughts. You got to master what you focus on. Um, number two, you've got to master your habits. You got to understand, you got to be disciplined about your habits. Number three, you have to master your actions. You got to be taking action that can propel your life forward. And now number four, we're talking about You've got to master your associations. And a lot of us never think about it. We never think that we're a product of the things we read, the things we see on television, the people we hang out with. That's 
those are our associations. And if you ever want to uh, master who you are, you've got to master what's, what you're influenced by. And a lot of us never think about it, but I do think about it. Like I, I think, is this something that will edify me? Is this something that will support my growth? Is this something for my highest good? That's how I decide whether or not it's something that I'm going to spend my time with, if it's something that I'm going to view, if it's something that I'm going to do, because if it doesn't do those things, then it has no place in my life. And that's how I master my associations. I'm not just spending my time doing anything. And I was saying to you guys, good evening. I caught your replay today. And all I can say is, well, thank you for filling my cup. Oh, I'm glad, Ebony. I'm glad you liked it. It was I was bringing it today. Today, tonight, I'm more mellow. But the message is equally as powerful to get you guys to understand that you know self mastery is not just a discipline in one area. It literally are your thoughts, your habits, your actions, your associations, and number five are, are your rituals. So your rituals are your routines, what you do every day. When you're talking about self-mastery, what you have to understand is that typically self-mastery is a, just a it's just a formula for living and it's rituals. It's like what you do for you. Like me in the mornings, I look at my vision board every day. I spend 15 minutes a day looking at my vision board, what it is that I want for myself. I spend another 15 minutes to 30 minutes every day getting clear, like setting an intention for my life, for my world, for my family. And I'm clear about that. It's part of my ritual. It's like what starts my day. Um, working out is a ritual. We're, um, being clear, having dinner with my family is a ritual. So you got to understand that mastery are the rituals. They're things that you say that this is the way I want to live. And you start to see that pattern showing up for you each and every day. And if those patterns aren't showing up for you, then you aren't mastering your life, right? You aren't mastering your life. And I don't know that we ever quite get there, but I do know that for me, if love isn't showing up in my life every day, it's something I can see, meaning I love my work. I love my spouse. I love my kids. Hey, um, hey, um, Cordelia, good to see you. I love my kids. If I'm not able to see those things as rituals throughout my day, then I'm not living the life that I meant that, that I'm, I'm meaning to live, right? Good to see you, darling. Um, I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. I'm talking about, you know, how to master yourself, right? Like how to own your journey. Okay. And number six is how to master your time. And this is one of those things. Like I'm really one of those people about, I'm really disciplined about my time. How will I spend my time with? Um, what I spend my time viewing. I don't watch television in general, um, maybe 10 hours a year other than workout videos. If I do workout videos in my basement, that's it. Other than that, I don't watch TV, okay? Um, so that's just kind of my thing. I um, I don't listen to the radio in the car. I'm not saying that you don't need to, but the way that I master my time, I use my time as clarity time when I'm driving um, or time to talk to my kids in the car. And I don't, I, I'm very disciplined about it, so much so that I haven't even put the radio code in my um, my Honda, so you can't even listen to the radio when you're in the car because I haven't even put the program code, programming code in there to discipline myself in that way. Um, one of the reasons that I do it is because I like to spend that time being clear, setting intentions, being clear and controlling what I'm thinking about all the time. And I always say to my kids that my goal is to make TV. You know, my, my goal isn't to view TV, all right? And because of that, I want to spend my time thinking about ideas, my ideas, and how can can I create the, the things that I want to happen? I need to make time for that. And I can't do that viewing what other people are doing. That's kind of how I see life, all right? It's okay, to, it's okay to heart. It's okay to heart. And if you need to reset, go out and come back. Go out and come back. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. And tonight, you know, I'm talking about how to master yourself. Like, literally, how do you master yourself? Thank you so much, Cordelia. Um, how do you master yourself? Number one is you, you've got to master your thoughts. You've got to control what you're thinking about. You've got to make sure that what you're focused on are high thoughts that allow you to see the big picture about yourself and about other people, okay? Because your words influence your thoughts. 
Your thoughts influence your feelings, and your feelings influence influence your actions. Number two, your habits. You've got to focus on if you want to master yourself, you can, you need to be disciplined in your habits, and you got to understand that your habits determine how you live. Okay. Number three are your actions. You got to make sure you're pulling the trigger on the things that you say you want to do. Like, are you really doing those things, right? Um, you got to be pulling the trigger and taking high level actions in your business and that, or in your life, that's how you create change for yourself. And number four, you've got to make sure you master your associations. You need to be hanging around people that, that challenge how you think, that up level how you think, that up level how you talk. All right. That, that, that I believe that your associations are the product of the people you hang out with, the things you see on TV and the things that you read. And I, I believe those are our dominant associations. How are you spending your time doing those things? All right. And, and is it working for you? That's what you need to ask yourself. And then number five are your rituals. You know, what are your routines that you have every single day? Okay. That allow the things that you want to happen in your life to show up. People that stretch you. Absolutely. People need to be stretching you. I'm challenging you. I'm telling you, I've got these mastermind partners of mine. And every week, they just don't give me a break. And they step all over my toes every week. I'm like, maybe I get a free ride every five weeks. But the things I haven't heard, they help me to understand that I'm thinking small when I think I'm thinking big. Uh, they help me to relanguage who I am because, you know, they see things in me that I don't even see, some, quite frankly. But that's association. It's all a good thing. Um, you've got to master your time. You got to understand that, you know, you get 24 hours in a day. You got seven days a week. How are you spending your time? You know, how are you spending your time? It's one of your greatest commodities. And when you start to value your time, like just your, just an hour, 60 minutes or, you know, or, or, or seconds, what you understand is that it translates to everything. And if you ever struggle with making your prices too low in your business, good to see you. If you struggle with making your prices too low in your business, it's likely because you don't value your time. It, it all goes together. It's like not separate from that. So if you ever are struggling on the price side, time management means everything. Yes, it does, Pat. If you're struggling on the value of your prices, it's likely because you don't value your time. You know, anybody can call you at any time, any time of the day, whatever it is. Any neighbor can walk in and do whatever they need. You're always there because you haven't put boundaries on your time. Very, very important success strategy. The next thing is um, if you want to master yourself, you have to master your heart. And what that means is that I think that it means having a great and giving spirit, right? I believe that the most successful people believe in something that's bigger than themselves that is good. And they also want to do good, plant good seeds in the world. They understand that you reap as you sow, okay? And that self-mastery is also understanding that it's not about you, that you are here and created for a purpose. And... And that purpose is a divine purpose and you it's your responsibility to plant those seeds. So it's about self-mastery, it's understanding and looking for opportunities to give and to sow. Uh, and it makes your life so much better, so rich. I love the opportunities that I have on this earth to be able to touch. I like to work with young girls. So that's kind of my thing. Like I like to work with girls and mentor them and support them in terms of getting a great education because I think it's just education is a great equalizer. Um, but it gets me stoked up like to be able to support and love other people, make your life purposeful. Absolutely. Um, and it's all a part of self mastery. It's um, looking for opportunities to give. I don't know any very successful entrepreneurs that don't give, that, that giving isn't a part of their, 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 their rituals or their habits, that they look for opportunities to give. I like, it makes you feel good to give. Like you, it's your responsibility to give. You know that you've been giving whatever you have because you're supposed to give. And so into the lives of other people, I believe that that is a discipline in terms of self mastery. It feels good to serve others and, and to be of service to others in a way that really uplifts life. Right. And the last is, um, self mastery. Um, how to have self-mastery is your teachers, right? So what I have learned over the years is that I have had many teachers. I have many teachers. I have many more teachers. And my teachers have also helped me discipline myself 
be on myself, okay? Because there are things that I want to do and there are things that I think I can do and there are things I think I don't want to do. And my teachers have always called me out to master for myself things that I'm weak at or maybe sometimes they teach me a different approach to how I want to solve a situation and it's been the shortest distance between two points for me. So one of the things that has helped me tremendously as coaching, mentoring, um, you know, uh, it's t having trainers, teachers, because they've helped me to overcome things that I did not know and master a certain area of my life. I've had branding coaches, speaking coaches, um, you know, outsourcing coaches. Everyone, are you? Are your hearts working? Are your hearts working, people? Come on, guys. All right, if you need to reset, reset, okay? Um, it's, you know, I know it's late. I know you guys are watching, and I know a lot of times you like to take notes, right? Right, 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 and tap, 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 right, 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 and tap, tap, tap. The hearts are so that other people know that this is great content, and we want to support more people. Like, my goal is to support more families, more moms, more dads with understanding that whatever it is that you you want possible for your family is possible okay you can do it all right and self mastery is one of the ways that I've learned over the years I'm still working on it every single day to discipline myself to show up more powerfully in my life to enjoy this life that I'm in to model that for my family to teach my kids that it is possible to achieve whatever it is you want but you got to master yourself that's got to be a goal right you got to be controlling what you're thinking about you got to be taking powerful actions consistently in your life and not be relying on hope and change and and hoping that things will happen for you you've got to make sure that the habits you have are in alignment with the success that you want and if it's not then you're not going to get what you want and you got to make sure that the people you're hanging out with the things you're watching on tv the things that you're reading are going to get you there like that those things are part of your plan your mindset plan because if they're not they don't fit okay you're not going to create a different result seeing things that tear you down that condemn you that condemn other people like you need to be looking at things that uplift your 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 vision right that give you that that give you the fuel all speak to your purpose that speak to your purpose absolutely pat and you need to make sure that whatever you're doing to master yourself, that it's ritualistic, not on today, off tomorrow, right? Because that doesn't work. So it needs to be something that you're consistently doing as your routine. And you can put on your calendar or that you can look and see, what am I going to be doing? What is my, what's my mastery plan for myself? And you want to make sure that the way you are spending your time is also lined up with mastering yourself. Like you want to be mindful of your time how are you how are you spending your time you're like your time is a valuable commodity how do you spend your time in your car how do you spend your time in the shower how do you spend your time you know um you know, with your family when you're with your family are you present with them are you not present with them all of those things add up and you want to make sure that your heart, that you're giving, giving, giving. You've got a way to give to other people. It could be time. It could be talent. It could be money. It could be any combination of those things. But in a consistent basis, you want to master giving. You want to master giving. I want to, I want to be a masterful gift. I want to look for new ways better ways to give more to people that need it that for causes that I believe in regular gasoline or premium gasoline I love that Pat and you want to make sure that you have teachers in your life that help you to master yourself that help you to create the discipline that you don't have that give you the accountability that you need while you're you're on the road to mastering yourself most people have that at a high level that have achieved success they've got teachers that's the reality they've got coaches they've got trainers they've got mentors, people they're working with that help them see the greatness inside themselves, that challenge them to do better, that sharpen their iron. And you got to understand that they need to be part of your mindset for this upcoming year. I mean, there are people that at times, whenever they hear you talk about like a coach, a teacher, whatever it is, you know, they, they tune it out. But if that's not part of your success plan, I'm, I don't know how you're going to get to where you need to be because that is the shortest distance. That's what I have for you guys today. For those of you that have joined me tonight, thank you so much. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist and I support moms with life and business success. You know, you can always check me out at MiaRedrick.com and MiaRedrick.com 
for on catch, K-A-T-C-H dot me, K-A-T-C-H dot me, Mia underscore Redrick. And they're like a hundred scopes there. They're all quality scopes. Thank you so much, Pat, for doing that for me. Um, there are over a hundred scopes there. And my only job is like, really? is to support you guys because I want you to have an amazing year and I'm loving this new Periscope community and having the opportunity to meet so many brilliant and amazing people. So you guys know what time it is. It's late, but you know what time it is. And all of my scopes, if you're new to my scope, what you need to know is that I am Lionel Richie's number one fan, okay? And I always... <laughs> And I always have a heart party um, on all of my scopes, uh, and I play a Lionel Richie song. Now, this is not the time to leave. This is the time for you to heart it up, okay? I'm going to play this song. I don't play the whole song, but I'm going to play the song. This is one of my favorite Lionel Richie songs. Does anyone know what this is? You probably like this, too. Can you guys hear this? This is... Anyone know what this is? This is um, still... I love this song so much, okay? Just, uh, mm -mm -mm. Um, I love Lionel Richie. I've gone to nine of his concerts. My husband has too. Once again, when he sings this in concert, like he sings this, and um, once, twice, three times, a lady usually comes on with this, um, and I like totally lose my mind, like scream, holler, yell, all of it. It's just... This song is so deep. If you just listen to the words, it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful, well-written song. I think that's why I love him. A heart of appreciation for all that Mia downloads into us for free. I'm giving it up, guys. I am giving it up. I'm, I am committed to supporting more families. This is one of the ways that I want to give and support you. And my only goal is that your family is better off as a result. That's, that's how I feel like family is a gift and we need you to show powerfully for your family right man this song is so deep right where did we go I love this song so much this is where we hearted up all right just a little bit more I know it's mellow it's late and um, I thank you guys so much for your time are there any questions for me oh I love sail on that is like my favorite too I just said this was my favorite didn't I um, <laughs> most of all, I don't sing though. I only talk. Um, I do. Uh, now this one I cried. We actually went to see. Um, we went to see Tina Turner when she did her last tour. But we went because Lionel Richie was the opening act, and Pat and I got stuck in traffic, right? And um, this song he always closes with. All right, and so. We got out in our car and he was singing a song, and so that meant the concert was over. And I knew it because I've gone to a million concerts, and so I started crying in the parking lot. <laughs> and Pat says, "We're gonna see Tina Turner," but I didn't go to see Tina. Just I went to see Lionel Richie. Okay, okay, I'll cut it off. Isn't that funny? I know, I know, I know. I'm a huge fan. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I'm Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist, and I support moms with life and business success. Are there any questions for me? I want to open the floor, see if you guys have any, if you have any questions for me. I'm, I'd love to answer those, and um, I'll give you guys like 10 seconds to write in if there are any questions that you have for me, okay, uh, tonight. Did this scope support you guys? Did this scope support you guys? Talking about mastering your mind, right? Because we all want to talk about how to make money and we all want to talk about success, but real success is mastering yourself. Thank you, Cordelia. You guys need to check her out. She's one of my core mom coaching clients. Work out around your day. Your scopes are always clear and precise. Thank you so much. I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about tonight, but I thought, you know what? We want to talk about mastering yourself because at the end of the day, that's what true success is. And having a goal to work toward that is really where it's at. And so even though you may see people that create great results in their business, at the end of the day, they've only created results because they those that list of things that I've said to you are the things that they are doing. And so if we can pull back the curtain and you can understand what people are doing and how they're showing up, you'll understand like the areas that you know you need to work on. I need to catch the beginning on the replay. You came in in the middle. Yeah, catch the beginning of the replay. It's a mellow scope compared to the one earlier today. The one uh, earlier today is how to handle 
when people aren't happy for you. That was a really hard horoscope, but it was a good one. And, you know, I like to get those in there too, okay? Um, and then I want to ask you guys also, are there any topics that you guys want me to scope about? I would asked some, maybe two, three weeks ago, and I think I covered all those topics. Are there anything in particular, is there anything in particular that you guys would like to have me scope about? Because I'd, I'd love to do it. So um, any thoughts, any ideas? Any thoughts? Anybody want anything in particular? Hmm, right? You're thinking, right? You got to think for a minute. Is there anything that in particular that you would like me to scope about, that you want me to do a whole scope about? Because I think that's kind of cool, too. Um, I know I had gotten a couple of topics. I think I have covered all of the ones that I had, um, but I've got some good ones also in my pocket for tomorrow. So, um, okay. Um, so if you guys need to think on those, that's fine. I love it. So on the future scopes, you can just type them in if you have any ideas, all right? So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. And thank you for joining me this evening. I am Mia Redrick. I'm the mom strategist. And I support moms with life and business success. Be sure to check me out at MiaRedrick.com. I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Bye.